Titanium dioxide is in the news because of a lawsuit going on in California against the makers of Skittles. Now this is something that's been going on for a while and it's based on the European Union labeling titanium dioxide not safe for human consumption. So what this is all about and do we need titanium dioxide and what does it do? So the short answer is we don't need it. It's a, it doesn't have any, any nutritional value. It does, it's not a preservative. It's not anything we need you know, in general food preparation. What it does is it makes things look pretty to say it simply. So it gives colors, you know, makes them a bit brighter. Um, you know, it gives it a nice glaze on top. And so it's all about looks, you know, it's used in, you know, powdered sugar you've used on, used on donuts. There's a bunch of applications as you can see here. So it's in Skittles, M&Ms, Kool-Aid, Mentos, chewing gum. So all things that are not, not very good anyway. Um, but uh, baking mixes and coffee creamers, interestingly, Jello, donuts, I mean, again, the uh, powdered sugar. And in the powdered sugar, they use it on there to prevent the sugar from clumping, you know, to keep it kind of uh, in this fine consistency. But then it's also found in some other items and um, that we're in contact with at least, and that's sunblock, toothpaste, deodorants, and uh, some pharmaceutical tablets. So it's in the pharma industry. Um, so again, I mean, we don't need it. It has a certain, you know, function to make things look better and that's about it. But the question is, you know, like, is it, is it safe to use? And that's a bit controversial because um, the studies that the industry likes to point to say, well, if you inhale it, sure, we've shown in rodents, if we expose them to a bunch of dust of this stuff, of titanium dioxide, yes, you know, they can become very sick. You know, it actually goes through the blood brain barrier, you know, it goes to the brain and other organs as well. And it's very damaging. Sure. However, they're saying the amount of exposure is huge. So you would have to be in a room that's really a, in, in a massive cloud of uh, dust with this stuff. And that won't happen in nature. I mean, you're not going to get that much Skittles dust that you're inhaling, you know. Um, sure, I mean, I understand that argument, but still, you know, we know it is a neurotoxin, you know, it is a possible carcinogen. So it can possibly lead to, lead to cancers. And the question is always how much gets absorbed. And uh, again, the industry is the first to say, well, we don't think a lot of this gets in. There were studies done on exposure through the skin, you know, and also, of course, in ingestion, you know, how much gets in there. Uh, interestingly, some studies showed that the absorption through the skin was minimal or non-existent. Some showed that there was absorption through the skin. So it's a bit dicey, you know, I'm not sure yet what quite to make of that. I think uh, as a, you know, as a precautionary, you know, you know, to, or to take caution in this, I would say, you know, let's minimize exposure to this because obviously it's something that has the potential to be damaging and we don't need it for anything, you know, it's not like, you know, for example, there, there are certain metals we need, you know, for example, we need iron, we need zinc, we need all these things, right? I mean, titanium or especially titanium dioxide, this molecule, we don't need, you know, we don't really need aluminum. That's another thing I'm going to do another video about, you know, that's pretty abundant, but it doesn't have any biological function. We don't need lead. And we know these things, if they're built up, might be very toxic. And I would put titanium dioxide in that category. So anyway, so uh, besides being present in these things, um, studies have shown the potential for, and this is very concerning to me, uh, DNA damage, inflammation, immune disruption, neuroinflammation. And that's mostly, uh, again, uh, when it's inhaled, interestingly, as it gets absorbed through the lungs, uh, the pathway to the brain is, uh, it ha has been shown. So then it actually gets to a larger extent accumulated in brain tissue. Um, and then formation of radical oxygen species. And that is actually quite concerning as well, because when we think about that, that is, you know, radical oxygen species, they can essentially cause DNA damage. You know, that's really what it is. We have um, a lot of antioxidants we take frequently to minimize this. You know, we do uh, anti-inflammatory treatments, all these things, but radical oxygen species are certainly of a, uh, of, of a big concern. They can cause cell wall damage and lipid peroxidation. Um, so the World Health Organization labels titanium dioxide as a possible carcinogen for humans. So again, the language is very um, careful, I would say. And again, truthfully, I mean, you know, how many studies do we have in, in humans? Yes, many studies were, studies were done in, in rodents. Exposure uh, uh, through inhalation has been shown. Some studies showed skin exposure in rodents uh, caused accumulation. Of course, we did show studies that when you ingest it, it becomes accumulated. But the industry is, you know, um, still kind of hanging on to this because well, it's in a lot of products. And if you see what kind of products it's in, you know, I mean, I think there's a lot of money involved in this, obviously. Now, there is um, in 1966, so a long time ago, the FDA uh, ruled that titanium dioxide should not exceed 1% of food weight. I mean, that's, <laughs> that's a pretty big amount. Um, I don't think 
any product today exceeds that, but th there was a ruling. I'm not sure exactly what that was based on. It was based on these studies. Or they just said, look, let's just be cautious with this. Let's not allow more than 1%. That's my assumption on this one. Um, as a food additive, so it's interesting. This interesting points this out. Uh, some of it, 40% is nano-sized particles. Now, now nano-sized means it's, these are very, very small particles. They're very, very tiny. And I did a video about uh, sunblocks, if you make your own, using uh, zinc oxide. And we're using, uh, to do that, we recommended a non-nano zinc oxide. That means just a slightly larger particles. And the idea is that the skin absorbs a lot of things that go easily into your bloodstream. So to minimize what goes into your bloodstream, the larger the particle is, the lesser the chance that it gets absorbed. So uh, if it's nano-sized, I mean, that's very small, you know, I mean, it might go down all the way to the individual molecule. So yeah, the individual molecule, think about it. You have one atom of titanium and two atoms of oxygen. That's a pretty small uh, molecule, obviously. I don't know if we do get to the molecular level, they usually probably stick together somehow. But again, nano-sized, very small particles with a higher risk of absorption. And then they're saying, well, about 60% is micro-sized, so it's greater than 100 nanometers. And there, the argument is that will not easily get absorbed either through ingestion or through the skin. The question, of course, is who controls this? I mean, you know, when the industry cranks out and, and makes these uh, glazes for M&Ms and powdered sugar and whatnot, I mean, do they really always go in and, and measure these particles, making sure they're compliant? I, I don't know how well we check these things, but that was the, uh, you know, general what the industry says, that's what we're dealing with today. Um, and again, my concern, studies on rodents at least, again, I know rodents are not people, but I think it's a very good idea to look at other mammals and especially that mammals that we can observe throughout their entire lifespan. Um, they show that nanoparticles can pass through the intestinal barrier, cause adenomas and uh, preneoplastic lesions. So there, anyway, so there is a concern in consumption, I think. Um, do we need it? No. I mean, again, no nutritional value. There's nothing in this that you know we should uh, you know have in any in any significant amount. Just like we shouldn't consume asbestos or or lead. I don't necessarily put it in the same category. But again, it's something that you know the only purpose of this is to make things look better. And I think you know that's something we can do without. Um, it's good to be mindful of where of where it's in. And maybe for myself at least, I will start to try to avoid some of these. Uh, one thing I want to point out. One th one change that I'm already made is I showed um, in a few videos ago a, a physical uh, sunscreen block which had titanium dioxide and zinc oxide. When I showed a video on how to make your own, I only used zinc oxide and I think that's still fine. And zinc, when you think about it, zinc is useful. It's a biologically useful molecule. It's used in uh, hormone uh, production. It's used as a building block in your immune system. So it has a biological function and we need it. I take zinc as a supplement actually every day. So if you get some zinc absorbed through the skin, if you make it in your sunblock, I mean, the argument would be that's not a big deal because that's something we can use, right? Titanium dioxide, you want to have as little as possible. So anyway, so I now switched, uh, uh, anyway, I, I usually make my own sunblock, you know, just with some coconut oil and about one quarter, so 25% of um, non-nano uh, uh, zinc, uh, zinc oxide. But you can buy it as well. And I found a company that makes just that. And um, just to show you quickly, so it's a uh, copper tone. Um, you know, I'm not related, uh, you know, in any way, uh, you know, involved in this company, but it's called Copper Tone Pure and Simple. And I like this one. And all it has is about 25% of uh, zinc oxide as a physical sunblock. Physical sunblock meaning, you know, it just shields you directly from the sun. So the sun doesn't penetrate in. That's why it looks a bit pasty usually. Um, a chemical sunblock is something I don't recommend at all. Those are the sunblocks that actually seep in the deeper layers of your skin and as the UV radiation hits that, it's kind of a small chemical reaction that happens to absorb the energy from this UV radiation to prevent you from burning. But that certainly is, uh, uh, I think, a lot more, more, more dangerous and that's been shown that that causes a lot more problems. So a physical sunblock with zinc I think is absolutely fine. Um, again, use it sparingly. I mean, best thing we can do is not bake in the sun all day long, obviously. But that's just one thing I wanted to point out that there are alternatives already out there. You can make your own. If you get a sunscreen, I would recommend now to get it without titanium dioxide. It might turn out that, you know, again, the particles are too large to get absorbed. The industry will certainly argue against this. This lawsuit is ongoing right now about the consumption. So when you take it in orally, how much gets absorbed and it's going to go back and forth quite a bit. But look, for all practical purposes, I think this is a molecule that doesn't do us any good. We know that. 
And um, you know, if we have to question each time, how much am I getting in if I'm consuming some of these products, I'd say the better thing is just to cut out those products and be on the, on the safe side on that.